hybrid friction stair welding. So, after conventional friction stair welding processes also having some advantage and disadvantage as well. So, uh, modifying the conventional friction stair welding process hybrid friction stair welding process has been developed. So, hybridization means it is a, it's a simple way uh, by adding some extra heat source with the conventional friction stair welding process that actually brings some new dimensionality uh, that is called the hybrid friction stair welding process. So, in this case the hybrid friction stair welding process normally comes into the picture in the by looking into the two different aspects. Uh, one is if the material work piece material is very hard or if the work piece material is uh, thermal conductivity of the material is very high and both the cases uh, using the conventional friction stair welding process uh, 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 little bit having some uh, demerits of uh, so, to overcome that kind of things, so hybrid friction stair welding has been developed, but uh, hybrid friction stair welding uh, is advantageous specifically for joining of the dissimilar materials, because here there is a scope of controlling the uh, intermetallic formation uh, that is very much difficult uh, in case of uh, conventional uh, fusion welding processes or maybe I can say the conventional friction stair welding process as well. So, let us look into how this hybrid friction stair welding uh, looks like. So, here if you see the FSW is developed in combination with the secondary energy source and uh, it can be used both for similar as well as dissimilar materials. In similar materials the configuration li is like that, uh, we use the conventional friction stair welding tool that means, the tool solar is in contact with the workpiece surface as well as the pin in, uh, in depth that is also in contact uh, or steering action of the uh, materials, but if it is very hard then if we use some extra heat source that actually basically soften the materials and uh, make easier the plasticization of the material and can expect uh, a very good weld joint. So, in this case the for joining of the similar kind of materials. Uh, uh, there is no need of using any kind of uh, tool offset or maybe offsetting of the energy source. We just straight forward along the oil central line, we can simply put that secondary energy source uh, and then it helps to joining of the uh, similar materials, but relatively harder materials. Uh, here relatively harder material in the sense that normally we define or maybe in, in general we use uh, fixes oiling process. Uh, is the softer material for example, aluminum or aluminum alloy and mainly based on welding of this alloy, this process was developed and now it has been advanced to application of relatively very hard material. So, in dissimilar material, but uh, if you want to get a very good oil joint, uh, in this case also we can reorient that position of the tool or maybe uh, uh, this thing uh, external heat source. So, dissimilar materials is problematic uh, welding uh, because of two different thermophysical properties are completely different in these two materials and if we can reduce the thermo, thermo mechanical behavior of the material around the oil zone and with some optimum position of the fixed and stair welded tool as well as the secondary heat source then it is possible to get a very good oil joint. So, that can be done in this two way, one it is possible to that fixed strain weld tool to offset is any one of the side such that it can control the volumetric mixing of the two materials and maybe uh, some impact on the uh, control of the intermetallic formation. At the same time since thermal conductivity are very different for this dissimilar combination of the materials, then it is possible to offsetting the secondary heat source or secondary energy source relatively towards the high conductive material. Uh, for example, if we consider the dissimilar material joining between aluminum and copper, it is better to use the uh, offsetting of the secondary heat source towards the uh, copper side. So, in general the advantage is like that reduce the stresses of the tool because external heat source actually makes the 
ease of material flow ahead of the FSW tool. So, that actually improves the stress on the tool or in indirectly the wear of the tool or maybe it improves the life of the tool. That is the main significant advantage of hybrid fixed state welding process. But if you look into that local heat source is used to preheat the relatively harder material either in similar or dissimilar combination and prevents the formation of large amount of brittle intermediate compounds and specifically for uh, joining of the dissimilar material that are the basic advantage of hybrid fixed state welding process. So, if you look into that that other um, uh, what is the main impact of the hybridization of the fixed state welding process is that it actually reduce the process load. So, then axial force actually reduces because by use of the external heat source in case of uh, hybrid FSW process. And at the oil zone this external heat source of course, if we find the optimum combination of the offsetting in the tool of tool as well as the secondary heat source that actually reduce the difference of the flow stress that means, it basically makes ease of movement of the tool and in that way uh, it helps to make making a better oil joint at the interface. High conductive material if one one of the material is very high conductive uh, for in case of dissimilar pair of materials in that case recover heat that means, whatever amount of the uh, heat uh, generated heat will conducted away by the high conductive material that lost amount of the heat can be recovered by using the secondary heat source that is another purpose of using secondary heat source in case of dissimilar welding process and offset uh, offset actually controls offset offset for the FSW tool that actually controls the intermetal formation. So, these are the basic advantage of or impact of the fixed state hybrid fixed state welding process, but the secondary energy source. Uh, can comes from this from two different uh, uh, two different way one is the thermal energy assisted FSW other is the mechanical energy assisted FSW. So, thermal energy FSW that secondary source can be uh, using some electricity some induction some laser plasma arc hot gas flow or steam or gas torch that can be used as a secondary heat source. But in this case the optimization of parameter is very much significant because finally, uh, the maximum temperature within the system should not cross the melting point temperature. So, therefore, uh, careful using of the secondary heat source helps uh, in case of thermal assisted uh, fixed and stirred welding process. So, the electricity and induction are used for the uh, for basically resistant heating of the sample and laser gas or plasma source can be directly used to the substrate material uh, for the preheating of the uh, material. Uh, mechanical energy assisted FSW that only the ultrasonic energy is only the source of the so far has been developed for the mechanical energy employed for the purpose of the hybridization of the fixed sterling process. Actually ultrasonic vibration directly sharpen the material by converting uh, the mechanical energy and without much variation in the uh, process temperature. So, that is the basic advantage of using some ultrasonic source or uh, ultrasonic energy in FSW process. So, apart from uh, the different technology or different uh, FSW uh, hybrid FSW process. So, now if we look into that specific to the fixed state welding of the dissimilar materials, what are the uh, typical properties we observe in a dissimilar uh, welded materials. In, in this case, we consider an example of joining of aluminum and copper. So, from the figure if we see that retreating advancing side is in uh, copper and retreating side we generally put the uh, aluminum and uh, exactly uh, there is another trapezoidal zone and that trapezoidal zone can also be considered as uh, the zone corresponds to the functional graded material, because at this point there is a mixing of the aluminum and co copper exist in between these two. So, when you try to, try to analyze the hybrid fixed sterling process, we can divide the three different zone and uh, this we can do the further analysis of that. So, here that 
formation of the functionally graded zone actually depends uh, it is actually transient in nature in the sense because we if you look into the fixed swelling process the initially the plunging plunging depth. So, it start from time t equal to 0 and gradually put the along the depth direction the pin and that is in transient in nature and then after plunging then we put some dual period also and during the dwelling dual period the more or less the size of the functional zone can be decided and then after that if we move forward that means, using some welding speed then it it creates the oil zone, but that oil zone is more or less uniformly, uniformly for, formed that means, at specific point the cross section is uniform and it gradually moves along the oil direction. So, that is why very initial period is transient in nature and oil zone almost remains constant during this uh, uh, process. So, here if you see the typical that in the F size of the functional graded material zone is like that 1.12 of the shoulder diameter in the upper side and the lower side 1.12 of the pin diameter. That means, just above the uh, diameter of the pin, pin size and, and diameter of the shoulder side in the, in the upper side that actually more or less creates uh, that is the, uh, the shape is like a uh, triangular. So, this uh, to analyze the hybridizing of the fixed rolling process specifically for dissimilar material. So, they create the this kind of different kinds of the zone. Now, we can be do in the uh, further analysis of uh, FSW of dissimilar materials we can see that first figure shows this figure shows that highlighted part in the that means, if we put the tool offset towards copper side that means, then uh, this the mixing volume ratio uh, uh, during the fixed and rolling process between copper and aluminum that actually as a function of the uh, tool offset. So, if we increase the tool offset that means, volume volume uh, volume ratio uh, of uh, sorry volume of the aluminum is generally increases and but uh, as compared to the uh, the same at the same time there is a reduction of the volume during uh, at the mix at the mixture of copper reduces. So, that actually in that control by the uh, amount of the uh, tool offset. So, this way the looking into the volumetric mixing that mixing ratio if you look into this figure that mixing ratio the copper by aluminum that actually at the when the tool offset equal to 0 that means 100 percent that means ratio is 100 percent that means equal volume mixing exists at the tool offset of uh, 0. But when the tool offset increases and it raised to around 2.5 tool offset 2.5 millimeter. So, the mixing ratio actually decreases that means there is a variation of the mixing ratio. So, this way it is possible to control and roughly we can estimate this volume mixing ratio and that that actually we can correlate the amount of the uh, intermetallic compound formation just by simply uh, controlling the amount of the uh, tool offset. Also at the same time here if you see that at the same time with the increasing of the tool offset. So, here the tool offset is provided towards the copper side that means, the tool is subjected to uh, more uh, resistance with the softer material as compared to the harder material. So, in that sense the amount of the axial force required uh, decreases with increasing of the tool offset. Uh, because at the high tool offset very small uh, part of uh, the copper side is in intact with the or contact with the tool as compared to the aluminum side. But whatever uh, the tool we can use. Uh, in general the welding of the whether similar material or dissimilar material the wear of the tool is the major concern and uh, that is the main component of the uh, uh, main concern of the uh, industrial application of the uh, FSW uh, process. So, of course, the in general the hardness of the tool should be much higher as compared to the uh, workpiece material and based on that there is a selection of the tool and then accordingly the 
characterization or measurement of the wear during the friction uh, during the FSW process that is the one uh, direction of uh, work uh, that is uh, that needs to be understand to completely uh, find out the impact of the tool wear on the in, in general on the FSW process and their com commercial use of that process. Even uh, like other welding processes also uh, fixed and welding process um, also have, um, can create some uh, defects, but uh, that defects comes from mainly the improper choice of the uh, parameter. So, extensive experiments are required to find out the process map of a successful oil joint, but if you look into that FSW process also we can see that different types of defects uh, can form. One is the due to the reason of that improper material flow and heat generation. If heat generation are not proper and flow of the material is not uh, very, um, uh, if certain part of the uh, fixed structure um, zone, if there is not sufficient material flow, that also creates some amount of the uh, defect. And that defect is also uh, influenced by the tool rotational speed. So, mainly tool rotational speed is the uh, one more significant parameter uh, that uh, directly impact on the formation of the defect. So, normally tool rotation speed is very high to keep and ensure that the sufficient amount of the heat generation uh, during the interaction of the tool pin and tool solder with the workpiece material. Then tool traverse speeds, the welding speed is too high that also creates some kind of the defect that is why we can keep the very low tra travel speed we can ensure the low welding spot can be ensured the chances of reducing of the defect in fixed welding process. Improper tool geometry selection. So, geometry is also another import important parameter that actually impact on the formation of any defect. Uh, sometimes the straight, uh, straight cylindrical or taper tool without any uh, thread can cause the improper material flow. So, in that sense adding of the thread on the tool, tool pin profile. Uh, can increase the material flow or material mixing. So, in that sense that geometry of the tool is also another important parameter and of course, that if that size of the pin optimum size of the pin is also required. So, that you will be able to uh, uh, plasticize the uh, certain part of the zone. So, that it, it will be able to create some uh, good zone oil bonding between the uh, materials. So, insufficient plunge depth is the that that may cause also oiling defect. So, if plunge depth is not almost up to the end of the bottom of the tool that can create some problem also. Unequal thickness of the joining material. So, when there is a two different thickness material in butt joint uh, configuration uh, are joined. So, in that case it difference uh, the thickness are different. So, they they uh, the mixing of the then then finding the optimum size of the tool is a uh, important parameter so, is an uh, tedious job. So, in that sense they can create the defect if there is improper size of the pin. So, that is also another uh, difficulty of joining and there is a chances of uh, producing some kind of the defect when you try to join the two different thickness material and gap between the plates also impact on the uh, oil um, the uh, defect formation in the um, oil joint because if uh, gap between the plates is too high then the material flow may not cover up the gap so the if it, it is if it is possible the optimum gap or maybe as close as possible to put the two material is helpful to produce the oil joint without any uh, defect so this uh, with this uh, we can uh, uh, conclude that fixed stress welding process uh, it is a it is a one of the most uh, significant development in recent days uh, happens and so much of work is going on fixed stress welding process and now the risk the direction of the work is going on the joining of the very hard material uh, using the uh, fixed stress welding process or the only only reason behind this is that this since this is a solid state process. So, chances of formation of the uh, other uh, metallurgical or uh, defects uh, that normally happens in the fusion welding processes, but still uh, 
for the several material aluminum or other li li little uh, softer material the this friction stress welding is an well established process. Now, come to the next uh, um, topic that is the diffusion bonding this is the another kind of bonding solid state bonding uh, mechanism. So, diffusion bonding is a solid state welding process. So, in this in this cases that coalescences of the two fang surface happen by the application of the temperature and pressure by the application of pressure, but under the environment of elevated temperature that is the favorable condition to produce the uh, diffusion bonding between the two surfaces. But the process when you conduct this process diffusion bonding between the two surfaces that actually does not produce any macroscopic deformation, but microscopic deformation definitely happens and there is there is not require any relative motion between the work piece. So, these are the criteria based on that we can join the two. Uh, uh, surfaces. This technology or concept is very old, but till it is a very effective process. Sometimes a uh, solid filler material can also be used, may or may not used uh, between the fang surfaces. So, right hand side you show the schematic figure of the uh, diffusion bonding that we can see the two different materials A and B. There is the application of the force and at the interface it is necessary to produce some, some amount of the heat generation. So, here electrical resistance can also be used uh, to generate the heat at the fang surface, so that two surfaces can be joined. Uh, if you look into the bonding mechanism in case of diffusion, so we can see that first stage is the deformation forming the interfacial boundary. If we, if we see the, the this is the actual actual contact when the two surfaces come into the contact the they are in, in contact with the uh, through the asperities between the uh, into the contact. So, that there may be some gap between the asperities. So, then to make it flat there is a necessary to ap to the application of the uh, pressure or application of the force. So, in the first stage the deformation and interfacial boundary formation with the application of the force. Second stage the grain boundary migration and the pore pore elimination. The grain boundary migration, so when there is a two surface are in contact, if we assume that that uh, contaminated layer or oxide layers are removed. So, in that says in, in, in after that they can the second stage grain boundary migration can happen and that there is a bonding form and between this two surfaces. And third stage then overall bulk volume deformation happens and the pore elimination it is looks like a continuous surface. So, it is a continuous structure. So, that is the third stage and diffusion uh, pore elimination that is the third stage is the stage volume diffusion and pore elimination we can clearly, clearly see from the figure. So, this is first stage, second stage and this is the third stage. Here we can it needs to mention also that diffusion bonding the condition is that when you it is a it is a successful welding mechanism, but but if it is possible to remove the any contaminated oxide layers between the uh, contact surface, then it is a very successful oil joint and it's a very good oil joint. And here only the process condition that means process parameters is only the uh, application of the force and over a certain time, over a long time normally over a long time, and sometimes. Uh, at the same time there is a generation of the heat is also required between the uh, surfaces. These are the typical condition for the diffusion bonding of the metals. Now, if you look into that which are the factors that actually influence the diffusion bonding uh, or diffusion welding process, we can say that it needs to be two things are there one is the temperature and time how to relate uh, in this process. So, temperature in the first case if you see that d equal to d 0 exponential minus q k t. So, d is actually diffusion coefficients and we can see that d diffusion coefficient is very strongly that coefficients value is very uh, strongly dependent on the temperature. So, that is a function of temperature. So, d 0 is the diffusion constant independent of the temperature and normally we can assume that diffusion constant as a room temperature and that it the value actually uh, uh, varies the with the exponential decaying uh, nature uh, as a function of temperature here you can see. So, d 0 is the diffusion constant q is the activation energy to start 
the thermally activated process and then T is the absolute temperature and K is Boltzmann constant. So, with this nature the diffusion coefficients actually uh, varies. Now, we can roughly estimate that what is the depth or length uh, what extent the diffusion bonding mechanism uh, works basically. So, that is x and that is a function of time also. So, here you can see the c is a constant and d is the diffusion uh, coefficients and t is the time and it depends on actually x is proportional to basically depth is very much proportional to distribution coefficients and time. So, here x diffusion length or depth you can see c is a one constant and d is the diffusion coefficients and t is the uh, time. So, based on this equation we can find out uh, the of course, if we want to get the desired depth of penetration then we can back calculate what is the time required for that and uh, of course, if we know that what are the temperature varies within that surface then only we can decide the what is the value of the distribution copies. So, they are these two parameters are the mainly but just simple calculation uh, uh, these two parameters are required in case of the diffusion welding. Now, as mentioned that if you look into the picture the two surfaces this is the typical configuration of metallic surface that oxides and contaminated layer exist in the uh, in the surface it is there and then uh, this contaminated for the diffusion bonding to be successful this contaminants contaminated layer should be removed. So, that pure metal to metal contact will be there and then then diffusion mechanism will be very strong uh, when there is a direct contact metal to metal without any metallic or contaminated layer. So, that is the only concern of a uh, diffusion welding or uh, diffusion uh, bonding process. Application we can find out the numerous application found the diffusion uh, welding process. Uh, application in the titanium welding for aerospace vehicles. So, titanium bonding uh, basically which material is very difficult or very hard material is very difficult to weld in other processes it's a, in that case probably the diffusion bonding is the another alternative method and uh, to get a good oil joint. Uh, second one is the diffusion bonding of the nickel alloy nickel alloy also uh, that in for example, in Cornell uh, 600 they are also used for the diffusion bonding uh, as well and sometimes dissimilar metal combination diffusion welding application copper to titanium copper to aluminum uh, to do the uh, uh, by do, uh, by looking into the dissimilar welding mechanism we can join this dissimilar combination of the material. But even for the for dissimilar material the main concern is the intermetallic compound formation and that must be controlled in this application. So, in that sense because the um, uh, normally diffusion bonding mechanism normally takes very high time uh, time requirement is very high and that we generally work keep work this as a constant uh, as a const as a pressure uh, constant pressure for a long time and so, during. So, in that during that time there is a uh, high probability or maybe uh, probability is very high because time for the formation of the intermetallic for the formation of the intermetallic compound because of the lengthy of the time. Now, after diffusion welding we look into another non conventional welding process uh, 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 that is called the explosive welding process. So, in explosive welding process it, it is also a solid state welding metal joining process and simply use the explosives, but in a very controlled way. So, that that explosive can uh, create high impact of the one metal to the another metal and then finally, creates the metallurgical bond between the two surfaces. So, that is the basic principle of the explosive welding and uh, but the the time duration or time requirement is very short uh, during this process it as opposed to the diffusion bonding in this case the the time requirement is very high to join the two surfaces. And since time requirement is very within the explosive happens the high rate deformation happens over a short period of time. So, normally whatever heat is generated that is in adiabatic not having the sufficient time to diffused eye or to convective eye. So, 
if you look into the basic mechanism or basic process of the explosive welding from the figure here you can see that the one substrate metal is there and then flyer we use and that that flyer we are supposed to join that flyer with the substrate material by control use of the explosives. So, normally the layer this layer substrate material substrate material then flyer and then chemical explosive normally in terms of powder we can put in, uh, layer by layer. Now, if we can start from the one side the explosion then it gradually uh, start the using the chemical explosive and creates the explosion throughout the surface. So, uh, from it starts from this point and creates the explosive and then up to that point explosive uh, explosion happens and then two surfaces are joined and the in between there is a high deform zone. So, that deform zone create and that actually joined the at that point the substrate and the uh, flyer are joined. So, normally uh, uh, normally the most uh, common application of this explosive welding we can find out the uh, cladding carbon steel plate with a thin sheet of thin layer of the uh, corrosion resistance material. So, some we can use the stainless steel also as a corrosion resistance material. So, that we can find out the common application of that. So, here this red color actually in, uh, indicates the chemical explosive that is arranged and then explosion keep on going and moving in direction. So, that the joining between these two surfaces happens continuously. Uh, let us look into that other um, aspects the most significant aspects of this joining uh, mechanism uh, and explosive that is that observed in explosive welding that is called jetting. So, jetting means during the explosion on the flyer plate, flyer plate a high pressure uh, pulse is generated. So, during the explosion there is a high pulse pressure is generated and this pulse actually propels the flyer's plate at the very high velocity and the jet is then produced of the uh, coalition of the two metals, two metallic surfaces and the jet formation is normally allows the two pure metallic uh, surfaces to join under extremely high pressure. So, that means, there is a high pressure pulse is generated during the explosion and that is uh, responsible for the creation of the uh, jetting. Now, the welding whether you can say the welding depends on the piece of the metal plate that collides at what angle with respect to the parent metal plate. So, that angle is also important and that uh, <coughs> that is related to the uh, jetting mechanism. So, for welding to occur a jetting action is required at the coalition surface then only the weld can form. We can see that what is the process geometry of explosive welding. See the parallel plate bonding is used for the large plate. So, for the large plates two parallel plates can be used and the flyer plate velocity range from 250 to 500 meter per second that is the flyer plate velocity and exactly at which point and with the application of the explosives that coalition point velocity range from 1500 to 3000 meter per second that is very huge velocity and then angle is also an important parameter. So, angle is around 2 to 20 degree. So, the impact must be sufficiently high to that to cause the colliding material surfaces to flow hydrodynamically when the initially contact when they are in intimately contact with respect to each other. So, that hydrodynamic flow of the material during the explosive actually occurs and then only welding will occur. If you look back to the picture also that. So, here if you see that this deform metal already deform metal. Uh, he, this part and it is a substrate metal. So, this this is normally uh, thicker as compared to the substrate material and if you create the explosive it is a directly join with this su substrate material. So, that there is a, but this this process happens in very sm small period of time and then uh, after joining these things this can be compared is a like a, a cladding process just one layer is attached with the 
substrate substrate material. So, that cladding layer normally we can use the some uh, uh, that having the corrosive resistance material. So, that that in, in that way it is used um, uh, or you can call is as a uh, oiling oiling process explosive oiling process. So, you can see that these are the typical parameters um, of the explosive oiling process. Now, steps in the wave formation and the bond morphology first is the impact by the explosive actually produces some shear deformation and that shear deformation in the stationary base plate which results is actually depression. So, that it causes in such way that it actually creates the kind of hump uh, during the using continuous use of the explosive or the explosive uh, that explosion actually moves one certain direction and then creates the kind of hump and they join and then harm interfaces with the at the same time when the harm interfaces with the jet flow and that actually produce some kind of the eddy in the uh, within the uh, in the jet. So, that creates actually the coalition point velocity constitutes a forward deformation of the hump and the further jet uh, creates some turbulence which again causes the jet, jet entrapment in the front vortex. So, that means this is a complex phenomena with the application of the faint surface kind of hump at the same time there is a jetting phenomena at the interact with respect to each other and create some eddy and or of course that also impact on the jet turbulence as well. So, these are the typical steps and then after doing all these things then finally, it creates the bonding mechanism between the two surfaces. So, it is a simply the mechanism is the basic high strain rate uh, plastic deformation of the metals and that uh, is responsible for the bonding between the two surfaces. So, explosive winding if you look into the theoretical aspects of the wave formation and the coalition we can find out some uh, simple calculation for that that we if we assume the Newtonian liquids that flow uh, streams of a Newtonian liquids and then we can assume that the flat plate of the elastic plastic solid and then uh, we can typical observed boundary typical observed boundary OAB OAB bond zone. So, at the boundary we can say not very straight zone, it is a kind of wavy bond zone we can find out on the boundary between the two surfaces. And here the angle, the dynamic bend angle that is also important parameter. So, we can uh, empirically uh, estimate the dynamic bend angle like that B beta mean equal to K H B by rho V C square. Actually, H B is the flyer plate hardness. So, the beta that means that angle dynamic bend angle depends on the hardness of the flare surface or directly proportional to that and also at the same time it depends on the density of the uh, flare surface as well as the coalition point velocity. So, velocity is also another important parameter hardness uh, and density these are the parameters that actually decides the amount of the bend angle and this is empirically and definitely k is constant here. So, velocity calculation can also be done uh, uh, that uh, shock wave propagation uh, the in the principle during the process is that that shock wave propagation should exceed the sonic velocity means the what is the sound velocity within that medium that means with the that metal. So, it should uh, shock wave is shock, shock wave should propagate more uh, faster than that of the sound velocity. So, most, most metals have the sonic velocity from 2000 to 6000 meter per second. Uh, that is the data and explosive velocity is actually greater than 120 percent, 120 percent of the sonic velocity of the material also should not be used because it is the explode that uh, definitely the shock wave propagation velocity should exceed the sonic velocity, but it should not exceed the 120 percent of the sonic velocity because at this point the uh, deleterious uh, effect of the shock. Uh, reification may also happen in this case. So, sonic velocity of the material simply we, we can calculate the simply square root of E by rho that means, C is the elastic modulus rho is the density of the material and V s is the sonic velocity. So, these are the typical velocity estimation can also be done. Other component of the uh, detonation velocity is it is also one kind of characteristic type of explosive uh, characteristics type of explosive has been shown to be directly proportional to the 
explosive density. So, detonation velocity is exactly depends on the density of the uh, 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 density of the explosives. So, for I think uh, nitro uh, guanidine explosive it ranges from 2000 to 5000 meters per centigrade. So, this is the one type of explosive. Uh, in this case the velocity actually ranges from 2000 to 5000 meter per second and uh, the density is around 0 0.14 to 0 0.9 gram per centimeter cube. So, using this uh, a specific uh, explosive the detonation velocity is around uh, we can empirically relate the 1440 plus 4020 into rho e. That means, we can see that it actually depends linear dependence of this x detonation velocity actually linearly depend on the density of the um, explosive. So, flare plate velocity can also be estimated from here also and here you can uh, uh, see that V d that flare plate velocity is also depends on the detonation velocity and sin beta by 2 and beta is the um, that angle we can we have just uh, calculated that beta equal to the minimum dynamic bed bend angle. So, beta is the dynamic bend angle. So, we can put the beta if you know the beta value. So, then we can find out that uh, flare plate velocity uh, this is the just uh, some analytical estimation of this uh, the order of velocity we generally find out in the explosive oiling process. So, explosive pressure also depends on the that flare plate velocity uh, and the density of the explosive. So, these are the typical calculation we can uh, in, in case of explosive oiling. Now, we come to the up another uh, non conventional oiling process also you can say the electromagnetic pulse oiling process and in, in this case the electromagnetic pulse oiling process here is the Ampere's law is used and the because the if you current carrying conductors we use it uh, then there is a uh, magnetic force actually uh, force field actually created with the uh, application of the uh, uh, current field. Now, if you know this know that the force between the two infinitely long parallel conductor is given by f equal to mu 0 by twice pi d i 1 i 2. Actually the mu 0 equal to permeability of the free space d distance between these two conductor and i 1 i 2 is the current flow. So, based on that uh, we can find out the force between these two parallel conductor. So, then if we apply the Lorentz force that is f equal to the cross product of the current density as well as the magnetic flux vector. So, based on that we can find out the Lorentz force. So, that that means, electromagnetic power swelling is just flowing of the electro uh, current and there is a uh, magnetic force field, but if we, we can use that magnetic force field actually depends on the current density and the magnetic flux. So, this principle uh, of producing the magnetic force field and that can be used in a control way. So, it is possible to develop the welding that uh, based on that the development of the electromagnetic pulse setting uh, has done. So, here you can see the process welding process the energy the normally in the electromagnetic pulse welding process the energy stored in the capacitor bank and then uh, charged through a DC power supply. Then energy is discharged through the work coil by triggering the uh, spark spark gap and then damped sinusoidal current set up in the work coil produces a transient magnetic field, because that is why here with the application of the current field it is a it can create the transient magnetic field and that tangent magnetic field is basically created around very small time span around 50 second and this this is sufficient to produce the joining of the uh, two materials. But if we see that transient magnetic field is responsible that here the induced electromagnetic force and the corresponding uh, eddy currents in the work sheets oppose their causes oppose their causes and therefore, the induced eddy current actually depend upon the material properties that means conductivity and permeability of the material and based on that the induced eddy current actually uh, develop. Finally, the work sheets are repelled with respect to the uh, away from the coil towards with respect to each other and then creating an impact due to the Lorentz force and that happens over a few microsecond. So, therefore, on interaction of the on account of the interaction between the induced eddy current and the magnetic fields all actually this 
uh, impacting of the one metal to other metal actually happens and that happens over the very short period of the time. So, therefore, we can see that uh, like explosive welding also the electromagnetic welding also happens it is a very small period of time. The bonding mechanism is that here also jetting action occur due to the high velocity impact and causes the um, that high impact, but at, at that time the expulsion of the oxide layer and contaminated surfaces that first clears and then uh, then after that sheet metals can be joined. So, after the collision the automatically already clean work surface come into the contact and they can uh, contact at very high pressure and then they can join by this electromagnetic pressure. So, therefore, the oil is formed at the interface uh, by establishing the metallurgical uh, continuity. So, what are the typical parameter for electromagnetic pulse welding the process parameter that inductan inductance of the current that is the one significant parameter frequency capacitor bank energy voltage current and the standoff distance between the seats. So, we can see the electromagnetic pulse welding is more suitable for normally we can join between the uh, very thin seats because then uh, because um, the creation of the electromagnetic pulse or uh, sorry electromagnetic force field over a short period of time that also having some limitations. So, therefore, in practically we generally use the electromagnetic pulse welding for joining of the seat uh, to different seat and we can use also the two different geometric configuration that means, two different uh, seat is, um, pipes. So, normally thickness of the pipes is less. So, that can also be joined using the uh, electromagnetic pulse welding. So, application we can find out electromagnetic pulse welding that magnetic pulse welding is used more applicable to tubular structure than the flat sheet. So, tubular structure is more useful to joining using this electromagnetic pulse welding. So, mechanical joining of the tubular cross section the tubular cross section and I torque mod torque rods is also already in use for the high volume of production. So, therefore, joining of the tubular cross section already uh, already implemented the electromagnetic pulse welding process. Normally, this process is very much suitable for the underwater application and automotive uh, uh, automotive spare frames. Joining of aluminum cans and the cap wafers to avoid heat generated problems that actually encountered in the other arc welding processes. So, in that case the electromagnetic pulse welding is very advantageous. It is also one thing is that uh, in electromagnetic pulse welding that here also we need the electric current. So, it is also one kind of uh, we can say uh, that it is a green technology uh, because here there is a no fumes, no gas is uh, produced during the process itself uh, and, uh, and it is a environment friendly process as well. So, this process can also be used um, uh, welding of dissimilar materials also or specifically dissimilar tubes by metallic materials can also be joined and specifically lightweight. So, normally this process has been developed um, for softer uh, aluminum based alloy uh, for electromagnetic pulse welding and of course, it is having some nuclear projects to join reactor tube to ceramic plug in that particular application we can find out the uh, electromagnetic pulse welding process. So, we have discussed uh, in this solid state welding process apart from conventional welding process we can say that some other non-conventional machining process just at explosive welding process, electromagnetic pulse welding process these are the typical development of the solid state welding process apart from the fixed state welding process. So, out of this all this process there is a huge development happens or still uh, work is going on in fixed state welding process, but till other uh, non-conventional processes is also applicable. Uh, for uh, when there is a uh, limitation of the uh, welding specifically for the tubular structure and specifically for the dissimilar combination of the materials. So, other welding processes are more conventionally used. So, in summary you can say that first we have discussed that solid state bonding mechanism. So, solid state bonding mechanism here we cover up that localized melting uh, mechanism, diffusion mechanism, recrystallization that is also one kind of uh, mechanism that is responsible for solid state bonding uh, addition that means, joining of the two surfaces uh, by additives then interfacial uh, reaction uh, then interfacial morphology. Interfacial morphology means that joining of the high uh, high rate of deformation that 
normally found out in the explosive welding and uh, electromagnetic pulse welding. Mm. These are the typical mechanism is responsible for the solid state bonding mechanism. Then we have discussed that cold welding and ultrasonic welding, cold welding process during the upsetting uh, joining of the two materials uh, with the application of the pressure and then ultrasonic using the vibration energy uh, that means the mechanical energy. Uh, here uh, we can uh, join the two metals also and of course, the ultrasonic welding very thin sheet is uh, applicable for ultrasonic welding process. Then we have discussion a lot on friction welding process specific for similar kind of material dissimilar material process and what are the recent development of the friction state welding process that means, in terms of hybridizing of the friction state welding process to get certain advantage of joining different dissimilar combination of the materials or similar combination of the materials. The, then we discuss the diffusion uh, bonding also the diffusion bonding the joining of the two metallic surface with the application of the pressure and temperature, but normally diffusion bonding uh, takes a long time and in that sense the elect, uh, explosive welding and electromagnetic pulse welding that also happens the high rate of deformation happens but over a short period of time uh, that um, that uh, deformation of the at the interface zone high rate of deformation interface zone creates the some bonding mechanism between the two surfaces. So, here also explosive bonding electromagnetic welding that actually the uh, flat surface or fang surface that actually very we normally use is the very thin sheet to get the successful weldon using these two uh, welding processes. So, in this uh, I can conclude that uh, end of the uh, module 3. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.